What's up everyone, it's your boy Scott. Welcome to the Scott Report. Today I'm bringing you an anime review of Recreators Episode 9. And you know, I didn't expect for them to actually pull the trigger and kill Mamika off. I mean, I thought they were going to do some type of ass pull, super magic, resurrection power and she'll come back. But no, she is really dead. And unfortunately for her, the only person that was there to hear her dying words to try to save Altair and send her on his road to redemption was Magane, who doesn't give a shit about what she's thinking because Magane just wants to cause as much carnage as she can. And this was a very Magane heavy episode. Over half the episode, probably about 90% of the episode even, was dedicated to Magane and her twisted game that she's playing on this world. As we see, she just absolutely loves being in this world, stirring up trouble and causing as much trouble as she can. As she says, you know, in this world, everybody is so stupid. I mean, I can manipulate them so easily. And also, the person who always stopped me, who is the main character in her story, isn't here to stop me, so I can just do whatever the hell I want, and everybody's too stupid to even realize what's going on, especially Alice in this one, because Alice is so dense, and I love Saber as a character. So to see her based off of Saber, and her to be so dense, and so easily manipulated, it's making me wonder if this ability to change probability, or reality rather, that Magane can do, has a type of effect on Alice just to make her do everything she can or does she really just believe anything everybody tells her because as Mamika was dying her last wish to Alice was well actually the Magane was to try to save Altair so when Alice showed up and saw that Mamika was dead on the ground Magane she didn't lie to her she just kind of bent the truth a little bit or a little white lie per se where she was like well I, I don't know what happened. I just saw her dead right there. And she says something about Meteora. So maybe Meteora was the one that did it. Because Altair is your friend, right? That's who you're working for. And it's all just a big plan for Magane to turn everybody against each other. To try to get them just to destroy each other. I mean, wow. I mean, she is a mastermind. I mean, I didn't expect her to have this big of an impact on the series to the point where she really is the main villain and she's causing more trouble than even Altair is right now because she just wants to see carnage and see the world burning. She actually told Alice that Meteora is the one that killed Mamika, so she's sending her off. She encounters Sota, and she's holding the guilt that Sota has for Shimazaki dying over his head and blackmailing him with that. And she's like, yeah, so if you don't want me to tell everybody what's going on with you, then you need to do what I say. And Celicia, yeah, why don't you tell her that Meteora is a traitor and she's the one that killed Mamika. Why? Simply because I just want to see everybody tear each other's throats out. And I do like that Soda at least didn't, you know, go along with it. I mean, he was getting to the point where he was getting wore down. He was getting weak to probably where he would have went along with what um, Magane would have said to him. But he actually had some ration and said, no, this isn't right. This is wrong. Why should I listen to you? Thankfully, Meteora was there to get him out of that jam because he is so desperate to save this secret that he has with what happened to him and Shimazaki over his head that he probably would have went along with it. He finally breaks down and confesses to Mary Meteora that he did something wrong. We still don't know exactly what yet besides the insinuation that he probably said some bad things to Shimazaki. He was jealous of her. He was envious of her. He probably said some things in her wrong time and she killed herself. But he has to live with that, and Meteora is there to help him through and coach him through this, and Magane is just sitting back the whole time like, oh yes, this is going to be fun. I mean, she's just a straight savage. It was one point where Mamika was flying and some blood fell from her body onto uh, Magane's corn dog, and she has ate it. She ate it with the blood, too. She's a fucking savage. Also, with the death of Mamika, it makes me wonder what happens to a character or a creation when they die. Do they die off in their respective works, or do they just die in this world? And with us not even being halfway through this series yet, I'm pretty sure some more people are going to show up. Like, imagine if more people from Mamika's time actually come, or a story, because she is a Sailor Scout, so there's probably some more around. There's that possibility, I'm pretty sure, that Magane would wouldn't have mentioned her main character if that person wasn't going to come into play soon. It's a really interesting world that this series has and it truly is a gem. It's something very different than what we're seeing in the world right now. But back to Magane 
and what she's trying to do to manipulate, get everybody to go against each other. She was trying to also get Celicia to turn on uh, Meteora, but I think Celicia, hopefully she would have been smart enough to not actually believe what was going on. Thankfully, again, Meteora was there to save the day before things got worse, and Yuya actually showed up. Our boy Yuya actually showed up with his persona to face down Magane, the battle of the two badasses, and Magane is broken, people. Oh my gosh, she is so broken because her ability can warp reality, and you know that her ability is based on lies and things like that. So when Yuta showed up and used his attack by saying no woman could ever withstand this attack and slashed at her, it just didn't hurt her at all because she used her ability to turn that into a lie. Like, uh, well, now you can't hurt me at all. And Meteora said, this power is so broken that basically it probably wouldn't be lifted until she dies so yuya can't do anything against her right now she's gonna need somebody really crafty in order to take her down and she's not a slouch either because she was out there jumping flipping and evading yuda yuya like it was nothing again man she's gonna be a really fun character and i really hope that she does end up being the main villain because she is great <sighs> i mean i can rave about magana this entire episode because even the dialogue that she had in it was so good like from when she was talking to soda trying to basically say you know what you're just as bad as everybody else because you're hiding this secret to her manipulating alice even though it doesn't seem like it's hard right now to basically what she's trying to do with alice by saying you know what you're still a murderer <sighs> she just has she's a puppeteer she's just puppeteering everything along to her way and it looks like alice is finally taking the field well, maybe Yuya will be able to stop her. Maybe Celicia will come in and we'll get a part two of this battle. But I know I cannot wait for next week. And you know what? Honestly, I can't really say that. I disagree with Magane. She told Soda, this is all your fault. You know, if you wouldn't have did what you did to Shimazaki, then we wouldn't be in the position we're in right now. Because like it or not, he is responsible for Altair, Setsuna, and everything that's going on right now. And she's absolutely right. Whether he regrets it or feels bad about it or not. But uh, another thing that I really want to point out that the majority of this episode also took place in one scene and that was fantastic. Just to get the dialogue that we had and just to see Magane just owning this series and taking it to her own and it's like you know soda I, I don't know when she was talking to soda and she wrapped her legs around his head and he was just sitting there like I mean he just had no effect at all like dude you got some Cooch in your face. Come on, dude. But anyway, um, that was the episode of Recreators. It was probably my favorite episode of the series. I mean, it just keeps going up and up and up. But it was just something special about this episode. Perhaps it was just the presence of Magane finally being felt and seeing what she's all about that made it all the while. Because I like villains. I really do like villains as heroic as I can be. You gotta have a great villain in order to have an even better story. So let me know what you thought of this episode in the comments below. Let me know some of your predictions and some of your thoughts and theories as far as the story so far. I absolutely love reading your comments about this series because there's so much to dig into. And what I really wanna know is like, now that Mamika is dead, I touched on this already, so I really don't wanna backtrack, but what happens when a creation dies in this world? And do you guys think there's any more characters that are gonna pop up in this series? Definitely let me know in the comments below. If you liked the video, go ahead and drop it a like. And if you wanna hear more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button as there's not a shortage of content for you to indulge on all this channel. And as I always say, you guys can be anywhere on YouTube right now. But you chose to listen to me. And I really appreciate that, so thanks for stopping by. On that note, it's your boy Scott signing out. See you soon.